All right, welcome to the final project here. Again, this is going to hopefully illustrate how washes should dominate your paintings. I mean, it shouldn't be always about the subject, trying to copy the subject. You have to find that delicate balance where you are, you know, painting a subject and you kind of know where you're, you want to go with it, but you have to let the medium do its thing. With this one, I didn't want to use a pre-drawing or anything. I just had an idea of where the big shapes were. It's a very, very simple composition. And I'm going to simplify it even more with the way I do it. So I attacked that building right away. That was the main focus for this piece. I wanted to get that on the paper and start letting that wash dry. You can see I used a very light alizarin crimson for the beginning of the building. I immediately put in some yellow ochres and uh, raw umbers for the roof line. And then I went into the sky. And the sky is just a little bit of cerulean and cobalt blue. Very pale. Very important to say that because uh, this is just putting a little bit of local color down, just like I did in the previous project, and come back later with the intent of making these into a more dynamic shape by focusing that wash on thicker paint and light and shadow. So everything I do at this point is very weak. We're looking at tea mixtures. Uh, now with the water, I used a little bit of ultramarine with that blue. So it's a very similar blue as the sky, but adding the ultramarine gave it a little a little more uh, of a darker value. And typically that's what you see in nature. The sky is usually the lightest value. Uh, the verticals tend to be a little bit darker, but I'm not really worried about that in this piece because we're dealing with a light value building. And then whatever the ground plane is, whether it's grass, water, whatever, uh, water is going to reflect the sky in most cases. If you have a choppy sea or something like that, it doesn't always do it. Um, but, you know, you, I, want, I wanted that a little bit darker. So that's just sort of knowing the values I'm dealing with and then trying to mimic, mimic that a little bit. Bring a little bit of those believability, you know, or realistic qualities into the art. I say that with caution because, you know, I'm not a realistic painter by any stretch. I, I like to exploit the looseness and the playfulness of art. And that's kind of what I do. You can see I used uh, a little bit uh, darker value on that um, wall. So there's a little bit of a kind of a pier there. And uh, I wanted to go in with a wash. Now that wash wasn't so wet that it would just completely run everywhere. So I managed that water. I wanted a tea mixture, but I didn't want it too soupy. And you really have to think about your values before you start putting a wash down, that's the key. Watercolor tends to dry about 20 to 30 percent lighter, especially that first wash, because you're dealing with, you know, white paper, and it's going to is very thirsty, so it's going to absorb a lot of that paint and pigment. Um, so you have to go a little bit darker and richer than what you want, and then chances are, when it dries, you'll have what you need. But if you go too pale, too weak. Uh, then that color is just going to kind of blend in with the sky. So it's not going to stand out. So that's the key, I think, to making this sort of style, this approach work. I like to paint very direct. This is the style I'm painting in right now. It's, again, I, I don't use a lot of drawings most of the time. Uh, but if I'm dealing with a composition or, you know, a scene that's a little more complex, I may put a drawing in or at least put the big shapes in there. But for something like this, I can just sort of kind of know where it's at and then let the thing develop as I go. So at this point, um, you know, everything is still very wet. I haven't dried anything. And uh, I'm letting, but as I'm painting this, things are drying. So this is the first time I'm going to use a dryer. Now I just want to dry a few areas off. Uh, I'm not really worried about the trees in the background. So that color is just a little bit of yellow ochre, cad yellow lemon with a little bit of ultramarine blue just to give me that sort of dirty green. And I used that background to go around the top of that boat that I just painted. That's a negative space painting. It's a really nice 
a playful look if you can get it in your artwork. But, you know, I, all these things are sort of mapped out in my mind before I do it. And now that the building is semi-dry, and it's I would say it's about 90% dry, there may be a little bit of water in there, I can move in with that second layer. And I wouldn't say this is wet and dry. This is wet and semi-dry. So if you look at the paper, there were certain areas that, that had that little bit of a sheen, that shine to it. And those are obviously still wet. Even in the building, I, I dried off some of the building, but other areas of the building were still wet. So as I put this light and shadow, this shadow rather, into the building, I know that's going to bleed and run a little bit. And I have to be good with that. So, be, you know, if I didn't want that to run, if I didn't want it to sort of look drifty and dreamy, then I would have dried it 100%. So that's all understanding and exploiting the washes that watercolor give you, the, the characteristics of the medium. Now, the seawall is fairly dry. And I'm going in with thicker paint now, just on the base of it, the bottom of it, and adding some abstract, playful strokes, kind of calligraphy sort of style. And I just want to anchor that wall uh, enough that it's going to pop the boat. So I sort of have that dark value behind the lighter value. Now at this point, I'm using very thick paint, all pretty much straight out of the tube and moving in with my accent colors. And this will bring a little more focus to the boats. Um, it'll add a little bit of you know, excitement to the painting because this is such a sort of a simple painting that I think you need that kind of uh, pop of color in there. Uh, if not, then it's just not enough to sort of, you know, sink your teeth into uh, visually. And here, just kind of letting those reflections uh, you know, melt into the water a little bit. That water, I shouldn't say melt because that water is probably 100% dry by now. Uh, but notice how I'm leaving some of the underpainting. So I'm not putting those reflections down and covering everything up I did in the previous wash. I want to let that those reflections breathe a little bit. And we need some of that blue underneath it to come through. So whenever I did that, you know, it was just about kind of getting some abstract strokes, but then also making sure I just don't cover up the whole thing. And here I'm just using a... Um, sword brush to just add a little bit of movement into the water and I'll just tie that color in by just adding a little bit to the area on the right um, just a little bit um, just so it doesn't look so uh, lonely over there on the right um, but that's going to again add some you know the feeling of some waves or just a little ripple or two and now I'm going to dry it off 100% so I'll get it nice and dry. And this puts the control back in my corner. Now I can do whatever I want. I'm going to get some nice crisp edges. I don't think the painting needed much here. So I just used some titanium white. This is matte heavy body acrylics. And just touched a few highlights, a little bit of detail. Uh, just something to give it uh, you know, a little bit of light there. And you know, just some dots. You know, a painting sometimes you know, needs those little specks of color. And I could have gone in with, you know, some orange and put some little buoys or something on the boats as well. But again, you know, I wanted to keep this one fairly simple. I can even, you know, like I'm doing now, touch a few dots into the, the water where it's maybe catching light. But, you know, look at the windows and the building and things like that, how you can see the, the windows, but they're, they're painted wet and wet. So they're sort of drifty a little bit. Some areas, you know, the door and the window on the right hand side of the building, the, those things completely melted away. And what a shame it would have been to cover that up, to go back into it and say, oh, well, there's a door there. I can't really see the door. I can see the door in my photograph, so I got to put it in. You don't really have to. Again, watercolor is will create art for you. It'll create a little magic and mystery. You just got to allow it to do it. And washes and understanding how washes work is the key. Okay, so here's a look at the final piece. I appreciate you guys checking it out and I'll see you in the next video.